Good morning, online worshipers. We are so glad to worship with you this morning. I hope that as you're worshiping with us, you'll leave a, a comment if you're on Facebook or on YouTube watching our uh, worship service. Um, and if you're watching on our website, I'd ask that you fill out our Connect card so that we can know you were there. We are appreciative of you showing up for worship each week, and you are part of this church family, and we hope you know that. Today is July 25th, and we have a few announcements for you. First, last Sunday night, the Perceptions Praise Team played outside, and it was wonderful. We had such a good time. If you missed it on Sunday night, last Sunday, look forward to August 15th. We're going to do it again. We hope the weather will be as perfect as it was Sunday night. So put that on your calendars. August 15th, 7.30, evening perceptions out on Church Street. The next thing I'd like to let you know is that you can start looking for a Wesley Covenant group. We are starting sign-ups and starting to organize that and keep your ears up for when those small groups will be meeting. Uh, we will be releasing the name of our study very shortly. We are in the process as a church community to uh, gather ch uh, school supplies for Dr. Howard Elementary School and also for Empty Tomb. We're filling up backpacks, as many as we can, and we're going to do a supply closet at Dr. Howard Elementary School. And so we're asking that you go online to our website, find the list of school supplies that we'd like you to pick up, and bring those into the church. We will get them into backpacks and get those distributed. Um, we also will take a check. So if you'd like to make a, a, a donation to this movement, write school supply fund on your check. That would be great. We have a grief share program coming up starting August 11. Kathy Mitchell and Sharon Johnson will be leading it and I'm hoping that as you are struggling with loss or know someone who's struggling with loss, whether it's the death of a loved one, the loss of a job, uh, the loss of a child, whatever the loss might be, um, Grief Share would like to address the feelings, the big feelings that go along with losing loved ones and losing jobs and losing hope. So if you'd like to be a part of Grief Share, put August 11th on your calendar from 6 to 8. And finally, here's a big one. I really want you to put on your calendar September 12th. That will be our rally day, and we want to have you come and uh, participate in worship that day. If you can come in person, it would be fantastic. Um, We'd love to fill up the sanctuary. After worship, we're doing a really cool thing. We're going to fill meal bags through the Midwest Distribution Center. So come to worship and then stay for the community service project that we're offering afterwards. September 12th, put it on your calendar. And now, let's worship God.
Please join me in the call to worship. A gift of a new day, unlived, untried, ready to be opened. A new day with surprising miracles, with love to be given, kindness to be shared, and peace to be enjoyed. A gift of a new day, God's gift to us. Let us receive it with joy and live in its expectation. Please join me now in our congregational prayer. God of our hopes and dreams, we are empty and long to be filled. We are hungry and long to be fed. We are lost and long to be found. Gather us into your love and pick up the pieces of our lives, just as Jesus gathered up the fragments of the five loaves and two fishes that remained after feeding the 5,000. Call us anew to eat our fill and to find our true nourishment in Jesus, the bread of heaven. Amen.
prophecy say shall fail, and whether there be tongues they shall cease, and whether there be knowledge it shall vanish away. Everybody, do you guys like picnics? So, I love picnics, and I have this pretty big picnic basket here that we like to take when we go on picnics. So, we're gonna open it up and we'll see what's inside. So, this really has anything in it that you'd need if you were going on a picnic. So, for example, it has cups over on each side. It's got utensils right here. Um, it even has napkins. There are plates. 
at the back. There's even salt and pepper in here. So it really has everything you need if you were going on a picnic. So you'd be pretty prepared with this picnic basket. Um, however, today we're gonna talk about a picnic where nothing was really prepared. So in our Bible reading today, Jesus was on a mountainside and all these people had come to listen to him and to see him. Um, and it's actually 5,000 people, so quite a lot of people. And um, to visualize that number, um, I have a container of rice here. So this container has about 5,000 grains of rice in it. So we are gonna pretend that every individual little grain of rice is one person and I'm just gonna pour it into this other bowl so we can kind of think about if each of these is one person, how many people were there, so. Oh my gosh, so. I don't know if you can really tell, it's about halfway full, it keeps sliding down, but yeah, there's a lot of rice in here, it's a lot of people. So. Anyway, all these people had to be fed, right? But after asking around, um, the disciples were asking the people there if they had any food. All they found was one small boy with five small loaves of bread and two fish. That was it for everyone. Um, so obviously the disciples were saying, we can't feed everyone with five small loaves of bread and two pieces of fish. Um, However, Jesus just started giving out the bread and fish to each person. Um, and by the end, everyone had somehow been fed and there was food left over. So how is that even possible? We don't know. We don't know how that's possible. God does amazing things all the time, really, that we can't understand because it doesn't make sense. Um, it's miracles from God that only he knows. So. Next time you're out on a picnic, don't forget to thank God for those miracles that we don't understand. Our scripture reading for today comes from the book of John, chapter 6, verses 1 through 14. This is the story commonly known as Feeding of the 5,000. Sometime after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, that is the Sea of Tiberias. And a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the signs he had performed by healing the sick. Then Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover festival was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, It would take more than a half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here's a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. But how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, Have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, and they sat down. About 5,000 men were there. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, Gather the pieces that are left, left over. Let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled 12 baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. After the people saw the sign Jesus performed, they began to say, surely this is the prophet who has come into the world. Will you join with me in prayer? Lord God, this, this miracle story is familiar to us. We have heard it before. We ask that you might let us see it and hear it in new ways today. Open our ears and our eyes and our minds to a new word from you that we might be your people in this time and place, caring for the people in front of us with limited resources by the power of your Holy Spirit. We ask it in Jesus' name, amen. 
innovation and change. Ah, you may not like change. I like it, but I also like routine, so you could be like me somewhere in the middle. But innovation and change, hold those thoughts. There's a saying, isn't there? Change is the only constant in life. Some people long for change. When Sam Cooke, an African-American songwriter, wrote, change is gonna come, he and his bandmates had just experienced being turned away from a whites-only hotel. He was hoping that change would come to, to, to change the race relations of the day. When Bob Dylan wrote The Times, They Are a Change In, released in 1965, he was viewing the turbulent American landscape and he was open to changes in society. He thought we could do better. Part of those lyrics are this. If your time to you is worth saving, then you better start swimming or you're, you'll sink like a stone for the times they are a changing. I suspect the disciples were trying to figure out how to swim rather than sink to the bottom as they watched Jesus and his influence on people and the changes he was introducing to religion of his day. Jesus was changing things and people were eager to hear from him. Last week we read about Jesus and the disciples being tired from so many people literally grasping at the hem of Jesus' clothing. Crowds gathered around, pressing in on all sides. They got to places before he did to wait for him. They were sad, the disciples and Jesus, they were sad about the brutal beheading of their friend, John the Baptist. In addition, we heard that the disciples had been given authority and power to do the ministry that Jesus was leading. He had sent them out two by two in pairs to teach and to heal on their own. And in spite of their exhaustion and how tired they were, we read last week that Jesus showed them how to reach deeper, to be resilient and to keep caring for people with compassion as they met the needs of people in front of them. I shared with you that the reading last week had been broken up and that there was a piece missing from it and that we would address it this week. That's what we're going to do. The piece that was not read last week is the feeding of the 5,000 and it is our reading for today. The times, they were a change in, under Jesus' influence. And the times haven't stopped changing, in part due to what Jesus taught and did, but also because humans pursue change. It's kind of in our DNA to create and to think up new things. We have reaped the benefits of social change and innovative new inventions like Gutenberg's printing press of the 1400s. The reason you have a Bible in your hands today is because someone innovated and changed what was happening then. I'm sure you've heard of 3D printing presses. They produce not words on a page, but functional 3D objects from a computer-aided design or CAD program. They create simple objects like hammers, but more complex tools with moving parts. They can also print body parts like ears, teeth, skin, and hearts. This week I read about the Fudini, a 3D printing press that prints food. <laughs> Some people think that one day a foodini, or something like it, will be standard equipment in home kitchens, creating ravioli from a computer program while you drive home from work. Say what? That's hard to imagine. Change can be hard to grasp, can't it? But so were airplanes hard to imagine once upon a time. So too was it hard to imagine that women could have bank accounts in their own name with no man attached. Also, it was hard to imagine that same-sex persons would one day be legally married. Married. And now we can start to grasp the Fudini, a 3D food printer. Here we are. The times are always a changing. I bet Jesus wished he'd had a Fudini back in the day when he faced about 5,000 men and we suspect there were women and children in the crowd as well who were getting hungry. Instead, he had the power of God. He was God. He had a deep love for the people. He had faith in his disciples as he trained them to be the movement. He had five small loaves and two small fish. I love that the scriptures make sure we understand these aren't big loaves and big fish. No, they add the adjective small loaves and small fish because wouldn't it have been different if these had been big loaves and big fish with 5,000 people? <laughs> 
Jesus has been teaching and healing all day. And as evening draws near, he looks out at the crowd and he asks Philip, where shall we buy bread for all these people to eat? So the scripture lets us think that Jesus is playing with Philip. He knows what Philip's reaction will be, and the text says he asks this question, testing Philip, knowing what he's going to do, what Jesus is going to do. Philip responds as we might have. Are you kidding? It would take a half year's wages to feed all these people one little bite. That's a reasonable response. Andrew comes back with a less reasonable response. Hey, Jesus, there's a kid here with five small loaves and, five, and two small fish. But then he shakes his head as he realizes how ridiculous this is. How far will they go among so many? We are a little bit like the disciples. We haven't quite grasped how big God is. We aren't really sure what God can do. And we don't really trust that God might be willing to use us. I read a sermon this week, and I am incorporating uh, three points that Stephen Bedard suggests we consider. These are the three points. The successes of and this is in relationship to this passage of scripture. The successes of yesterday are not enough. Two, when we see a need, we must attempt to meet it. And three, limited resources plus Jesus equals more than enough. I want you to hold on to those three thoughts as we go through this. The disciples are changing. They've just returned from healing and teaching. They know the power of God to do amazing things, but they're still learning how big God is, what they're capable of doing in the power of God's Holy Spirit. They have experienced some success, but now they're faced with a new situation that, that seems beyond their ability. They can't rely on the healing and teaching that they've just finished, the successes of their past, They've got to gather up new strength for the problem that is at hand today. The success of yesterday is not going to be sufficient to meet the needs of this day. So that is true for church, capital C, the great big universal church, but it's also true for this church too. We cannot rely on past success, but need to adapt and believe we can face new realities. We need to, to own that we have been given authority and power to face the needs of today. Second, when we see a need, we need to attempt to meet it. We must attempt to meet it. The feeding of the 5,000 shows up in all four Gospels. That's unusual. Um, it's the only miracle besides the resurrection that makes its way into all four Gospels. Now, the four Gospels are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And you may remember that Matthew, Mark, and Luke are fre frequently similar. John's usually the wild card. But on this story, all four of them share it. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all have the story of the feeding of the 5,000. In the Gospel of Luke, Jesus says to the disciples, you feed them. <laughs> the disciples are being trained to do ministry. Right? That's why Jesus empowered them and sent them, gave them authority. And he is still training them to be leaders in this movement, to do the ministry rather than observe the ministry. In John's Gospel, Jesus takes the bread and the fish, gives thanks to God, gives it to the people. I hope that is reminiscent for you of communion. I hope you, I, that we give thanks to God and then we share. Once that's done, everyone eats until they are full and there are baskets left over. When Jesus saw a need in our scripture reading for last week and in our scripture reading for today, he rose to meet it. The disciples are learning and changing as they embrace their own place in Jesus' movement. They are learning that they have the capacity to meet the needs of the world right in front of them. I hope that we understand that we are the disciples today, that we are learning and changing and believing that we have everything we need to do the work of God's kingdom now. And finally, even with not enough bread and not enough fish, certainly not enough resources for the task at hand, <coughs> with Jesus, it's enough. Barbara Brown Taylor suggests that the miracle of the story is the realization that when hearts and minds and wills are tuned to God, there's always enough. 
in the economy of God, there is enough for all people. What's lacking is the willingness to share. Taylor thinks the miracle of that day is that all those 5,000 5, men plus others witnessed the generosity of a little boy, are moved by it, changed by it, and pull out the resources they had brought with them. They shared the bit of bread they'd brought and the dried fish they had intended for themselves. And it was enough. It was, in fact, more than enough. The power of God igniting human hearts, minds, and wills to put the needs of a community first drew out a miracle of compassion and generosity. So Stephen Bernard says we can learn these three things. The successes of yesterday are not enough. When we see a need, we must attempt to meet it. Limited resources plus Jesus equals more than enough. And now I want to share with you a way that our church is going to live into this. We know the successes of the past are not enough. We know there are people who need Jesus and the community of faith. We know that even with limited resources, limited vision, limited finances, limited time, with Jesus, in the power of God's Holy Spirit, we have enough to change. We have enough to bring something new. So at our Ad Council meeting on Tuesday night, Barbara Zacco introduced a crazy idea. A wonderful, innovative, it just might work, crazy idea. And Ad Council approved it. I want to share it with you today. It's still being fleshed out. It's not complete. Right now it is a big idea, and we're going to have to put the details into place, but I love it. Starting this fall, we are going to offer a family fun Sunday service on the last Sunday of every month. We're still filling in those details, like I said, but I'm excited about the possibilities. On the last Sunday of each month, we're going to change up worship. It will be a 30-minute service in the sanctuary, and we're going to let the children lead us. We will focus on providing a time for families with children to come to worship that is geared for their growing families. On last Sundays, we will all wear masks until we get all the way past COVID because our children are the most susceptible, the most vulnerable, because they can't be vaccinated. Children and youth will light the candles and read the scripture. The message will be an extended children's message geared for young minds. And I got to tell you, as many people tell me they like the children's message, I think that's the part they listen to the hardest and get the most out of almost every week. The angel choir will be invited to lead our singing. After 30 minutes, we will dismiss and head into Friendship Center to work together on a project of care and compassion for our community. We will invite the daycare families to join us, to worship with us once a month if they choose. And we, we think that that once a month gives them a place to get started. Maybe committing to every week is way too much, but possibly once a month we'll hit the, hit the need that they have. We'd like them to come. Uh, for the worship, but if they choose, they could come at 11 o'clock just to participate in the community project and teach their children the importance of knowing that we belong to one another, that we work together for one another. I am excited to try this new thing. I'm grateful to Barbara Zacco, and I'm grateful to God's Holy Spirit for generating an idea. I have no idea if it'll work, well, what I am, but I am delighted that we're going to give it a whirl. And here's what I want to say to each of you. As you think about this service and you think, oh my gosh, it's changing. That's more change. Rise to the occasion. I want to invite you to make last Sundays of the month your top priority for being in worship. If you can come to the sanctuary, come here to worship. We'll have masks on. We will be focusing on our children. And Barbara had a great idea for how, for how we can think about this. The last shall be first. You know, the disciples wanted to push the children away from Jesus. You remember what he said? Let the little children come to me. That's what we want to say to our families in this community. Let the children come to Jesus and meet Jesus. We're willing to sacrifice our regular thing. We're willing to risk an unknown. We are open to change. 
led by the Holy Spirit. The times they are a change and they are always changing. But one thing remains the same. We are the people of God called and empowered by God to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Here's the United Methodist Church mission statement. We are to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. We are to raise up a new generation in love for Jesus and living with hope and compassion in the world. However, the feeding of the 5,000 people happened, whether the loaves and fishes miraculously multiplied or the miracle was hearts changed to care more for one another than to hoard the resources they already possessed for themselves. Either way, at the heart of those changes was their purpose, to make disciples of Jesus Christ and to transform the world. Making disciples changes hearts and minds. Transforming the world changes injustice, need, and hopelessness. We are the people called by God to innovation and to change, to transformation, and to faith deep enough to sustain our discomfort with a world that never rests. So people of God, here's what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to raise this endeavor up like Jesus took the fishes and the loaves. I'd like you to raise this endeavor of uh, Fun Family Sundays. I'd like you to lift it up to God in prayer for blessing. I'd like you to prioritize it in your own worship life. I'd like you to, to believe that God is going to keep working innovation and change and it will give us more than enough to accomplish God's purposes. The times they are changing, and the people of God are changing too. Will you join with me? We thank you, Lord God, for this congregation, for this family of faith. We thank you that with you we can dream big things, we can try new things, we can believe that your Holy Spirit is seeking to help us reach people with your love. By the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord, we ask your blessing on Fun Family Sundays. We ask that, that this congregation pray for the daycare families, that they might receive an invitation and respond and come, and that we might get to know them and build relationships with them. We pray, Lord God, that the, that the mission projects that we undertake to serve our community on these Fun Family Sundays um, will teach us to live with compassion in the world and to see the people of our community, knowing that when we share our resources, there's more than enough. I pray, Lord God, that we will develop leaders among these children and youth as they lead us in worship and experience both the responsibility and privilege of leading your people. May they grow up to lead your people as young adults and adults as well. Bless us, Lord God. By the power of your spirit, bless this congregation. And through this congregation, bless this community. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Please join with me in our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. To those of you in our online worship community, we thank you for your financial support of this congregation. Your ongoing gifts continue to help us dream big dreams. I ask that you would examine your heart and your life as well and see if there's anything you're holding back from God that God is kind of tapping you on the shoulder and asking you to bring forward. We make an offering of our whole selves to God and we do it right now.
On Tuesday night, Ad Council, our governing board, decided to try one more new thing. We have ordered silicone bracelets for you to wear. They come in green, yellow, and red. They are a way for us to visualize um, how we're feeling about close proximity with other people. Green means I am open for hugs. Yellow means, ah, keep a little distance, but I'll do an elbow bump with you. And red means, you know what, I'd still like to keep six feet of distance. So whether you are doing that, that for COVID reasons or you're just an introvert and like to keep your space, the, these little bracelets will be picked up as you come into worship. We probably won't have them today on the 25th, but I'm hoping that we'll have them by August 1st. And you'll grab a bracelet to put on and wear into worship, and that will signal to the people around you whether you want to get physically connected or you're okay just with that spiritual connection we've got going on. At the end of each service, we do know ourselves to be a connected congregation, connected in purpose and love love for one another, and care for our community. So as you get connected this week in prayer and in thoughts, in scripture reading, as you send cards to loved ones in our congregation or thank you notes to the office here for the work that our staff does, you are connected to this community of faith and we're so glad. I ask that you would go in peace from this worship service to love God more, to love yourself well, and to care for your neighbors. Go in peace. Amen.